This guy, Eric Johnston of Kanner Fitzgerald, and Mike Wilson of Morgan Stanley have been dead on. This is uh, Eric Johnston. Let's ask Tanner's Eric Johnston, who was not in that camp. He made his case a couple. That's not Eric Scott Johnston. Had some major pain ahead. That's He's Eric here Johnston. With me on set at post nine. Uh, it's good to see you again. Good to see you, Scott. Uh, you nailed it. I don't know what else to say. I mean, uh, 12 2. You said bearish. Let's get bearish. SP's down near 5% since then. What did you see? So I think that the good earnings in the market, which has been the Fed is done or close to done, the good news, um, inflation's falling and China reopening is now in prices and that's now behind us. And now where we look forward, that, that's the, we have the reality of living with the 5% Fed funds rate with earnings that are still far too high and need to come down. The economy that's going to continue to slow down even further than where it is now. And we're living with, we're gonna be living with QT, not only here in the US, a trillion dollars over the course of a year, but also in Europe, as we heard today. Let's go a couple things real quick. Sure. So you say the 5% funds rate as if it's in stone. Okay. Okay. Powell's trying to chisel it. Yes. The market says not so fast, right? Two years not, not close to that yet. Yes. So there's a disconnect between the two. Why are you so convinced they'll get there? So I, I'm actually, I think it'll be 5%, and I'll say plus or minus 25 bips, and I don't really think it's gonna matter, because here's the deal, is that the only way they're gonna get to five or five and a quarter is if we're here around, in around 3,900 inequities and things are fine in the economy. The way that they don't get there is if equities are down at 3,700, 3,600, and the economy's starting to roll over which is why I think it is a lose-lose right now for <laughs> equities. A negative, no, no matter what side of the... Short the market! And, and part of the issue is, is that if the market does hold in there and it gets the five and a quarter percent, that's just going to make the fall even greater down down the line. So I, I think it's a lose-lose situation. SQ, Q, Q. So forget the year-end rally. They all but killed that yesterday. Is that yes. what you think? Despite uh, your yes. overall negative sure. view, it doesn't do. mean that we couldn't have a tactical move within it, right? Yes, I think it's, That's I think it's very doubtful. Sure, in the Q, Q, Q. Back about a month, month and a half ago, positioning was very offsides. CTAs were still very short. Hedge fund net long exposure was very low. That has now, that has now changed. CTAs bought their $200 billion and are now running net long. Hedge funds have brought up their net long exposure. So that positioning sort of rip due to short covering, I think it's probably now off the table. And as we look forward to January and February, there's a couple different issues, which is number one, earnings season. And I yep. do think that earnings. estimates are gonna come down a fair amount. And then number two is seasonality around January and February. So I'll give you a couple statistics. People think January is typically a good month. In the last 22 years, the market has actually been down in January and February 13 of those times. And during bear markets, it's been down 100% of the time. So if you look at 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2000, 2009, 2020, 2022, January and February, all those bear markets was down each time by a significant amount. So I think we have some headwinds over the course of the next three months ahead of us. Did you expect the outlook to be as hawkish as it was seemingly yesterday 5.1 17 of 19 see it over five percent whereas zero did not that long ago it was a, it was a little bit surprising i i didn't think that powell was going to give an inch to the doves because as soon as he does that then all of a sudden financial conditions loosen too much which they already had done since since that's right meeting. and he mentioned that as an, a thing that he's concerned about and also there was a big gap between the december meeting and the next meeting and i think that he wants to keep his doors essentially keep the doors open on the hawkish side where you get all the but if he Lenar opened down and then it been, been rallied so, back. You know, in the end, I think that it was somewhat, you know, kind of somewhat in line with what I was thinking. It'd be slightly more hawkish. The question, I suppose, at this point is, what's the fallout going to be? 
from all of this. If the economy is going to go off a cliff, if there's going to be a recession. I spoke with Double Lines Jeffrey Gunlock, as you probably know, yesterday. He says a recession is more likely. Let's listen. I think it's a better than 75 percent probability. There's two things that people aren't really talking about that really make a difference. No one talks about M2 anymore, money supply, and it's growing at a super slow rate. In fact, the six month rate is negative. And I think the year over year rate, the 12 month rate, which I think is less significant, but it's interesting that's down near zero as well. So there's not a lot of liquidity out there and making liquidity more difficult, obviously, is the Fed raising rates, but no one also talks about uh, enough Quantitative tightening, Jay Powell said 95 billion a month. I mean, this is a lot. This 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 hurts liquidity conditions, it hurts the economy. That's got a lot. 75% chance of recession, is that where you are? Higher, lower? Okay. Uh, I, so here's what I would say. I would say that there was, there's gonna be a recession in 23 or 24, right? The unemployment rate is three and a half percent. Over the course of time, it ranges from three and a half percent to 10%. Three and a half percent, by definition, you're getting close to the end of the cycle. And so I think there's, I think that 75 percent chance in 2023 makes a lot of sense, and I would, I would agree with that. I'd be, I'd be around that level um, for the reasons he stated um, and, and more. Um, but let's say that it doesn't happen in 23. It's not like we're out of the woods. The market will then start pricing in that we're going to have a recession in 24. And so they'll put a lower multiple on those 23 earnings because <laughs> it's coming. It's just a matter of when, when you're the... at the end of the cycle with the unemployment rate of three and a half percent, not at the beginning uh... of the cycle. So here, here's what I want you to help me understand. Yeah. Help our viewers understand this because you make, as we discussed the last time, a lot of tactical calls. You can change your mind based on where conditions are. It sounds to me like you're pretty set in stone on what the outlook is, not just in the near term, but for the next year. What could change your view? If a pivot can't, if a pause can't, what can? So one thing is going to be is going to be price. So um, I think that you know anywhere around these levels, you know above 3,700, above 3,800, um, it's it, the outlook is very is very poor. The risk reward in owning equities is, is very poor. Um, once we get down to the 3,600, 3,500 area, then we have to see what the conditions are on the ground, and that's something that I'll be you know reassessing at that point because price and what where do we stand? You know, one of the things that is ahead of us are these estimate revisions that everyone's talking about. And it's very hard to own a stock when you know that estimates are going to be going down. It's very hard to own equities when you know the economy is going to get worse. It's very hard to own equities when quantitative tightening is ahead of us in the U.S. and Europe. You have too many headwinds. Now, where you can do that is if the multiple is 13 times and we were at S&P 3000. Okay, then you can say, okay, well, there's valuation, there's reasons why you can argue, but at 18 times earnings, and then you add what I just said together, it, it's just very hard to see any upside in this market. 36 to 3,800, is that, I mean, do, do we do a new low or? Yeah, so I think we're going to the low 3,000s, and, and where we are, whether it's, wow. you know, 3,100 or 3,400, I don't know, but I think we're going to the low 3,000s. That's 20%, people. The first half of the year. You know, so that's my, you know, that's my overall uh, overarching okay. view. So let's expand the conversation. I think we're, we're set up. Six hundred off of that. Seven hundred off of that. Thirty-eight hundred. That's twenty percent. So if you got a sixty forty or fifty fifty portfolio, your overall is going to be down ten percent. That's assuming your bonds hold up. You have been selectively so assume if you got a million dollars right now you and you stay in the market and you have a 50 50 portfolio you're gonna have well, I mean, I think that 900 grand unknown, so you have to take a longer in the next approach, six months and that's what I'm trying to do a lot of stocks are down much more than the S&P 500 I think we should buy some real estate I mean the S&P is down what 17 percent year to date okay and I've got stocks and stocks that I don't even own that I watch that are down 30, 40, 50, 60% on the year. 
Uh, and that's, uh, it, it, that's despite the fact that we just actually had a rally of about 9% before today uh, from the lows. So to me, I'm just trying to look for long-term opportunities. Just trying to stay alive. Good valuations, best-in-class businesses.